What's going on here? Uh, this is an introduction to digital art. No, I mean with the background. Yeah, about that. We're we're having some technical issues here. Try my best. Nice. That works. We can start. Have I got things to show you? This is going to be the best introduction to digital art that you have ever had. This is, of course, just one of two videos. Do I need to do the sets for those two? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to hang around, bud. This video covers the hardware and software that you need. I have a second video, I'll link that in the description, that goes over the learning to draw part of Introduction to Digital Art. So, why don't we see what's behind this door? Um, could you lower the set more? It's stuck! Okay, part one, the hardware. Oh my goodness, what you can draw on comes in all shapes and sizes, and unfortunately, prices too. We're talking $25 for the cheapest little drawing tablet out there, all the way up to thousands for those Wacom Cintiq Pros. Yeah, $1,000 is a bit much. Okay, then let's take a look at these first. These are graphics tablets. They're little flat tablets. They sit on your desk. There's no screens. They do come with a pen. They usually plug into your computer via a USB cable. And what you draw on this tablet will appear on the screen in front of you. Some folks have asked, can't I just like use my mouse? And you can, but I find these pens to be way more natural feeling for drawing. Plus these tablets have extra features that your mouse doesn't, like pressure sensitivity. The harder you press on your pen, the wider your lines get, or the more paint comes out of your brush, depending on your settings. Now Wacom makes a tiny little tablet. Huion makes one too, but I would spend a little bit more and get a mid-sized graphics tablet. If you can swing, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 dollars, you can get something really nice at an entry level price. Trust me on this, just by spending a little bit more money, you're going to get a much, much larger drawing area, which is gonna make it a lot easier to do detail work, use the pen to hit interface elements, and just generally navigate around your computer screen. One drawback to these is you really have to train yourself on how to use them. There's a learning curve here, and it's going to take practice to get used to using one of these tablets. But once you build up that eye-hand coordination, you could do absolutely anything with one of these. They're not going to hold back your art in any way. If you are getting used to using one of these, I do have a video that has some tips and tricks and lessons that'll help you get used to using one. If you are learning art right now, then check out my other channel. It has an intro to art series or my new introduction to digital art course over on bradsartschool.com. That course is designed to be a stepping stone for beginners into more advanced tutorials. There are lessons and homework and projects and lots of sketches to work along with. And each lesson is designed to teach you a new skill and give you a quick Quick win. So when you finish that lesson, you're going to say, whoa, I did that. And then you can apply that new skill to your own art. So if you want to learn more, there is a link down below in the description or just head over to bratsartschool.com. I was thinking of something with a screen. Yeah, those are much easier to get used to. And you have a lot of options here. Let's start with a pen display. Scenery coming in. These are monitors that you plug into your computer and you can draw on them using the included pen. They aren't full computers, just screens, right? Right. The pens work in the same way as those graphic tablets we were just talking about, but here you're drawing directly on the screen, so you see your line as you are drawing it. And as you can imagine, it's a much more natural feeling, it's easier to get used to in that learning curve, much lower. These come in all shapes and sizes and price points. Mainly they work with Macs or Windows PCs, and sometimes even Android phones or Chromebooks, but you lose some features if you connect it that way. Price-wise, you can find a cute little 10-inch XP pen starting around $170. I think that's the cheapest one out there right now. Huion makes a really good 12-inch, that's not that much more expensive. The cheapest Wacom tablet out there is called the Wacom One, which is a little bit bigger, but it is going to run you about $400. Ooh, Wacom. I've heard of them. Yeah, I would I would skip the inexpensive Cintiqs. The Cintiq Pros are great, but the cheaper tablets that Wacom makes, those, those are a little bit older and they're feeling really dated at this point. If you get into this category and want to get something nice, I would look at the 16-inch size. Those are obviously a little bit more expensive, but for me, they're the perfect size. They're small enough that you can move them around your desk or get them out of the way when you're not using them, but big enough that you have plenty of screen real estate for drawing and just tapping around and moving around the interface. These kind of pen displays also get really big, like this one. This one is 22 inches. Something to note, most of these do not have touch screens. At least the inexpensive ones don't. You can find some that do. Some of the Wacom's XP pen makes a touch screen 
screen. It's really only the pens that work on the screen with most of these tablets. Your fingers, not so much. I don't need fingers. Keep in mind, if you do find one with a touchscreen, you're gonna pay extra for that. Those tend to be more expensive. In fact, in general, the more features you get, whether it's higher resolution or those touch features, the more you're gonna pay. That guy who doesn't talk is changing the scenery again. Are we done with this category already? Yep, we are stepping up in quality. Computers and tablets that you can draw on. And as I said a minute ago, the more features you get. Let me guess, they go up in price. You got it. Let's take a look at this first. I think this is one of the best pieces of tech for artists just starting out. And I'm talking about the entry level iPad. It's $329 plus another $100 for the Apple Pencil. What you're getting for this price is a lot. The performance of this iPad is pretty darn good. It's not Apple's top of the line processor, but it's it's really good. There are a ton of drawing apps and all of them are gonna run super, super well here. And in general, I just feel like an iPad and an Apple Pencil are really easy to just pick up and start drawing with, with very little learning curve. Even though this is entry level, it is plenty powerful enough for any art app that you're gonna throw at it. Although if you are looking at something like this, you might wanna hold off for a few weeks more. I have a hunch Apple is in the process of upgrading this iPad very soon. If you prefer Android over Apple, Samsung has been making some great tablets too, and they tend to be cheaper. Samsung just updated their Tab S6 Lite with a new processor. That is a really good deal for the price, but if you pick one of those up, make sure that it has 2022 written on it. Otherwise, you're getting the older, slower version. I recently saw this thing going for $250. It's not unusual to find it under $300. That is a fantastic price for what you're getting and everything this tablet can do. And it, it comes with the S Pen packed into the box at no extra cost, great value. Of course, both Apple and Samsung have more expensive versions of their tablets with more bells and whistles. So if you want something a little bit higher end, something that's gonna last you longer, then the iPad Air is a really nice value. The iPad mini, super cute. The iPad Pro, if you really want to go all out and get all those bells and whistles and fancy screens. Samsung isn't holding back either. They have their Tab S8 line. It is just fantastic performance, beautiful screen on these devices, and the Ultra, it's huge. It is the biggest tablet I have ever seen. Probably too big for a lot of folks, but it's still cool that they have the option. What if I want a full laptop? If you're in the market for a new computer, a Windows 2-in-1 might be a great option for you. They can be more hit or miss. Samsung has some really nice options, and a lot of those come with an S Pen packed in. They are ultra light laptops, and so they're not the most powerful thing in the world. The latest Surface Pens that have rolled out for the Surface Pro line are also a great improvement. One thing to note is that a good Windows computer is going to start around a thousand dollars. I would not trust anything cheaper than that for art or illustration. You will regret it months and years down the road. The best part of a Windows computer though is it can do anything. It can run so much software. You could do so many different things with it. You could run games on it that you just can't run on a mobile interface. But when you have Windows, which is a powerhouse operating system, it just takes more resources to run. So even if you see something like the little Surface Go, it, it may be a really good price, but I would not recommend it. It's just not powerful enough for art. Okay. But what about the apps you draw with? A lot of pros in animation, game design, or the comic book industry, they use Adobe Photoshop as their go-to drawing program. Cool, I'll start there. Not so fast. I love me some Photoshop, but I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. He always says that. It comes with a monthly subscription cost anywhere between $20, $50 a month, depending on which package you get. If you need it for work or school, great, That that's wonderful. But if you're just having fun and learning art, there are some better options out there. What app you choose really depends on what device you get. Definitely check out Krita, it is free. If you go to their website, krita.org, you could download it there. If you find it in the Windows Store, it is gonna cost money, just a heads up there. Although, if you do have some extra money to spare and wanna throw it their way, it's a great way to support a great free product. There's also apps available on Windows like Sketchable or Leonardo. They're a little bit more user-friendly when it comes to touch-based interfaces. I'm also a fan of Clip Studio Paint. It's available pretty much on every device nowadays, although they just updated their pricing model and it's confusing as heck, so I'm curious to see how how that pans out over the next year or two. But even with that funny pricing model, you can get the old version, one-time purchase, and it is a great, 
great product. Now on the iPad, I am a huge fan of Procreate. It's about $10. It is also a one-time purchase and a tremendous value. There are about a dozen other good apps for the iPad as well. Affinity Designer, Fresco, Art Studio Pro, so many more. And on Android, my favorite is Clip Studio Paint. Yes, the same Clip Studio Paint I mentioned a minute ago for Windows. That does have an annual subscription that goes along with it, but in my opinion, it's head and shoulders above every other drawing app on Android. It's not to say it's the only one. You have apps like iBest Paint X and Infinite Painter, those are fun to use too. This is just a taste of all the drawing apps out there. There are so many. This is a lot of information. Can't you just tell me what to get? Yeah, that is a lot of information. And what is right for you depends on a lot of things. First of all, if you're on a budget and you already have a computer, I think one of these small Huions is a great investment in the place I would recommend for most people to start. If you have a little bit more money to spend, or you already have an iPad released in the last several years, maybe picking up an Apple Pencil for that is a really good idea. It's also cool because the iPad could be used for so many other things. If you prefer Android over Apple, I would definitely say that Tab S6 Lite is a really good deal, especially if you could find it on sale somewhere. And lastly, if you have all the money in the world, yeah, go Wacom. They're great quality. There's a reason why pros pick them. Now that we've gone through this, check out my other video, my other intro to digital art video where we talk about about the drawing portion. And if you have any comments, let me know down below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.